Hi, this is the simulation software Algo2 that we are going to use to illustrate some of the ideas around um, how we handle fluids. So um, this is a two-dimensional physics engine software. It um, implements with the calculation how objects should behave and you can uh, adjust some of the parameters, like I can disable rotation so I can move this around more easily. And it behaves fairly um, naturally. I can kind of throw this and see projectile motion in a pretty realistic way. So uh, what you're seeing me simulate here right now is a solid object. And um, you can use this software for that also. But what I want you to do right now is to use the software to help develop your intuition for liquids. So let me draw me some liquids. All right, so I have some liquid here in a container. And you can see that when I move this container around, the liquid behaves in a kind of natural, uh, realistic way. And I can, um, so I can move the container around and I can also um, draw a tool for myself and uh, manipulate this liquid using the tool that I draw. Oops, oops. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, it can float, it can sink. So, um, so this 2D physics simulation software can simulate liquid quite realistically. And I want to show you how this is done. You can kind of almost see it here if you look at this simulation carefully. Um, let me start from the beginning, start from scratch how it simulates liquid. All right, so I'm starting with uh, just some box of material here. And notice the simulation is paused right now. Let me leave it there as I liquefy this little block. Right click, liquefy. And that's it. That's uh, how it simulates liquid. You can really see it around the edges here where the each element of the liquid the simulation software is simulating is kind of uh, being pixelized there, more or less. Um, when I run the simulation, you will see what happens. So you see these droplets being simulated here. And really what it's simulating as liquid is not that different from many pieces of solid block-like element. In fact, I'm guessing, uh, is it still spreading out? This is, uh, what you're seeing here, is essentially one layer of liquid. So if I draw myself a little tool and kind of splash this around, then you can see how this is one layer of liquid. So what it's simulating as liquid is interaction between these little individual elements. And in fluid mechanics, that is essentially what we do. Instead of being concerned about force on a single discrete object, we are concerned about force on fluid elements. So if we have some fluid, which can be represented this by block of stuff, then instead of thinking about forces on this entire block, we would be worried about, well, if someone's trying to apply a force on this entire thing, then how is that force spread around the different elements? This is where the concept of density and pressure become important. Because instead of talking about mass of this entire block, what we need to be able to deal with is how much mass is in a small infinitesimal segment of that object. 
and pressure it becomes important because instead of worrying about the force on the entire block what we would now need to worry about is how is that force spread per element so if i'm applying a force on this entire face how is that spread around all the elements along the surface so that's why we introduced the concept of density and pressure in the context of fluid mechanics. It's so that when we are dealing with, let me pause simulation, <laughs> liquid, and we are imagining applying force. We are imagining applying force on this block of liquid. We, we want to be able to distribute that force over these many different elements. And if you are talking about the weight of the whole thing, since the whole block won't move as a whole, we want to be able to treat these little individual elements as um, its own thing. And the way simulation simulates its realistic looking liquid is it simulates the interaction between these elements. They have some coefficient for repulsion between them. They have some coefficient for attraction between them. And when it's all said and done, it gives you a fairly realistic simulation. Now in fluid dynamics, technically we are using calculus and the fluid elements we are talking about are infinitesimal, um, very immeasurably small elements, not these visible um, spheres that you can actually literally see here. But the concept is the same. So. The laws of physics haven't changed. It's the same law of physics. You're just uh, applying it to tiny little element of the piece one by one. So that's what I want you to illustrate here um, to demonstrate that when we are dealing with the fluids, we still use the uh, same laws of physics that we've been dealing with so far. We have not introduced any new laws. We are just changing how we are applying it to, to a rigid body versus fluid, which um, changes the shape quite a bit. So that's all. Um, let me know if there are any questions, and I will see you in the next unit. Bye.